So yes, I decided to hop on anabolic steroids. So I wanna be completely transparent. So I will be revealing my exact cycle later on in this video, so stay tuned. But first, why did I decide to do this? Well, honestly, Derek from More Plates, More Dates, talked me into it. Ideally, you would be having some sort of anabolic agent stacked alongside it to get like real, you know, myonuclei accrual. So last year, I wanted to make some gains. I took this cycle of MK677, which is a growth hormone secretagogue, and it's supposed to naturally increase growth hormone production. And he reacted to that cycle, saying it wasn't going to be effective on its own, um, and it wasn't even necessarily healthy. It can lead to very high blood sugar levels. It can be a lot easier to develop insulin resistance on it. It can put you in a state of like fight or flight, essentially. And I don't know if it's got in my head or what, but sure enough, I had horrible side effects. Uh, so bad that I actually quit the cycle of cold turkey within like a week after I started taking it. I did a whole video on this, but I still wanted some sort of a boost. And this time I decided that I needed to trust Derek. So I took his advice and I did a cycle that he actually approved of. In fact, he helped me plan it out. I would do at least, you know, eight weeks probably. Again, highly individual dependent on how well you respond. So it's been four weeks. We are halfway there and I wanted to show you the progress so far. So far, I've gained seven pounds of a proprietary blend of muscle, fat, and water. I'll let you decide how much of each. I also increased my incline bench by a significant amount. So on day one, my first set, I did 205 pounds for nine reps. Then on day 30, I did 225 pounds for eight reps. And yes, I know they aren't full reps. All right, look, my triceps are already way too big. I'm trying to focus on the chest, you know what I mean? And uh, the second set, when I was a little fatigued, I still did 215 for 10 reps. So I would say I increase my hypertrophy range incline bench by not quite 20 pounds, but close. I'll estimate like 17 pounds and that's not bad for a month. And now for the physique. So here's my physique on day one and here's my physique on day 30. So look, I, I know I didn't get the lighting and angles exactly the same, but they're pretty close. In fact, if anything, I would say the before lighting is a little better, but I definitely say I'm looking a little bigger on day 30, which it's cool, I'm happy with the results. So, what anabolic steroids am I taking that gave me these gains? Well, they are exactly what I said I was going to take. I might hop on something else. I was thinking of some turkesterone or something like that. I will send you a full fucking cycle of turkesterone. That is right, turkesterone. Now, before everyone starts whining, who that's clickbait. No, no, no. Turkesterone is an anabolic steroid. This is not my opinion. It's anabolic, meaning growth promoting. And of course, it is an ecti steroid. Okay, it's a steroid hormone in insects, but it can also be found in plants as well. So it is absolutely an anabolic steroid, but not the type that you're thinking of. The phrase anabolic steroids is commonly used as an improper shortened version of the phrase anabolic androgenic steroids which is what you probably thought I was taking, but no, turkestrone is not that. Anabolic androgenic steroids like testosterone, their anabolic effect is mediated by androgen receptor binding, while it is believed that turkestrone's anabolic effect is mediated by estrogen receptor binding. And supposedly, turkestrone does not have any negative androgenic side effects like the synthetic performance enhancing steroids usually do. And also, turkestrone supposedly does not suppress any natural hormone production. And so most people would consider tercesterone natural, regardless of the fact that it is indeed an anabolic steroid. Do I think it's natural or not? Well, to be honest, I don't give a fuck anymore. Anyway, I took three of these pills twice per day. And that's a lot, all right? That's a shit ton, big dose. If you're buying these yourself, then that can get pretty expensive. That would be one bottle of these every 10 days. Now, with all that being said, do I even attribute the gains I made to this tercesterone or could it have been just placebo? Or was I even taking turkesterone at all? There's actually been a lot of drama in the industry lately that these turkesterone supplements might not even contain turkesterone at all. For those of you who don't know, there was some guy who supposedly tested Derek and Greg Doucette's turkesterone supplements and found the turkesterone in them to be extremely underdosed. Instead, he found a significant amount of another ectosteroid, beta ectosterone. Now, apparently this guy could be a competitor, so I would take these tests with a grain of salt. Also, after that, Derek did a long video with his chemistry team, and they seemed confident in their testing. The audience response was very positive, but it does seem 
like many of these Terkestrone products out there, might not be what they actually seem. Now, for what it's worth, from what I can tell, this does not seem to be intentional in any way. The third-party testing required by the FDA does not seem extensive enough to always distinguish between all these various types of ectosteroids. Greg Doucette actually recently did a higher level test beyond what is required by the FDA on his Terkestrone product and indeed found only trace amounts of Terkestrone. That what's actually in the product isn't in fact Terkestrone, at least not in large quantities, only in trace amounts. But actually he found higher than what is labeled amounts of total ectosteroids. Interesting. So look, of course these guys should know what's in their product, make sure what's in the product matches the label, but I'm not making this video to talk about ethics, all right? I'm trying to find out where my gains came from, right? And here's something that is not talked about enough. Too many people assume that if there is no terkestrone in this product, then it must not work at all. But in fact, the opposite could be true. So from my research, it seems that different combinations of these ectosteroids work better for different people. So I'm sure it's very individualistic. And there are actually reviews from people who took terkesterone and ectosterone, and they actually like the ectosterone better. So who knows? It's very possible that some people could benefit from fake terkesterone more than actual terkesterone. But it is also important to note that regardless of what ectosteroids are in here, they are still anabolic steroids. Yes, that is, that is correct. I'm still taking anabolic steroids. So with that being said, do I think this product had an effect? Yeah, it probably did something. To what extent? I'm not sure. And look, I am as unbiased as you could be, right? I'm not sponsored or anything like that. Did I want it to work? Yeah. And that brings us to the question, could it have just been placebo? And yeah, absolutely. It absolutely could have been all placebo. Of course I wanted this stuff to work, not only for the gains, but also it would make a good video. So maybe because of this, I train 10% harder in the gym without even realizing it. Or maybe I eat a little extra food here or there. I want to put on a little more muscle, you know? I'm hoping this thing will work. See, for me, the value of terkestrone isn't just about the physical compounds. It's also about the hype that's been built around it and the excitement that it's caused online because the higher the hype, the more likely there are to be placebo effects. But look, from an unbiased perspective, I couldn't care less if the results come from the placebo, right? Because they're still real results. If you gain a pound of muscle from the placebo, you still gain muscle. Now, this is not at all designed to get you to buy these supplements or to justify these supplements being labeled incorrectly. It's more to shed light on the complexity of the mind-body system because usually there are a lot of things that could go into the improvement or deterioration of a physique. Some other things that might have had an effect. A few months ago, I did change up my diet and now I am eating a little bit of animal products every day. It's not a ton, but look, I was vegan for a couple years, so it was a significant change. I didn't actually change my macros at all, but it is possible that the animal products might affect my hormone levels and it could be that the protein is a little more easily absorbed. Plant products tend to have more anti-nutrients, can absorb the stuff as easily. Also, like four months ago or something, I also changed up my exercise routine, mostly just exercise selection, volume, rep range, body part split, intensity, all that stayed the same. But I was working out with just like dumbbells, resistance bands, and like a chin-up bar. And now I'm lifting with machines and free weights in an actual gym. I'm curious with all that that I just laid out there, what do you believe that the progress in the physique comes from? Is it the terkesterone? Is it the placebo? Is it the diet? Who knows? I'd be interested to know your opinion. Comment below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.